St. Columban's Church here in Beliver for our funeral mass for Maureen Dempsey this morning. In this mass we're also remembering Eileen Murray whose anniversary occurs and the family of baby Dennis McClare whose passing they marked this morning also. I welcome in particular Commandant Stephen Byrne who is representing on Taoiseach here this morning. Before we begin the mass I invite you to be seated while Sean will introduce for us some memorabilia which the family will place here on the table before the altar. Good morning. Jack brings up a golf club which signifies Maureen's great love in later life of golf. She loved the game but cherished even more the great friends she made in her local golf club, County Mead Golf Club. Alana brings up a cake of brown bread. This symbolizes Maureen's commitment to providing for her large family and her unwavering devotion to family right up to the end. And that's an actual picture of the brown bread on the left-hand page. 
Ronan, the youngest, brings up a family photo which symbolizes Maureen's unwavering devotion to family. She devoted her life to her husband, Michael, 12 sons, and all the extended families, and was so proud of them all. What a legacy she has created. Rory from Australia brings up a travel voucher, signifying Maureen's great love of traveling throughout the world, especially to meet family and friends, and of course, grandchildren. Aileen brings up a plant representing Maureen's love of flowers and plants and her, her legendary green fingers. She never missed an opportunity to rob a slip of a plant she liked, which she would bring home and propagate. So friends, with these items of memorabilia and our own memories and prayers, I invite you to stand as we begin the Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, for my fault, for my fault, for my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of Google. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. O God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye has can see. Fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. I invite you to be seated as we listen to God's Word, read for us by Jerry and Frank this morning. <clears throat> A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. The king's leading men spoke to the king. Let Jeremiah be put to death. He is unquestionably disheartening the remaining soldiers in the city and all the people too by talking like this. The fellow does not have the welfare of this people at heart so much as its ruin. He is in your hands, as you know, King Zedekiah answered, for the king is powerless against you. So they took Jeremiah and threw him into the well of Prince Melchiah in the court of the guard letting him down with ropes. There was no water in the well, only mud. And into the mud, Jeremiah sank. Ebed Melech came out from the palace and spoke to the king. My lord king, he said, these men have done a wicked thing by treating the prophet Jeremiah like this. They have thrown him into the well where he will die. At this, the king gave Ebed Melech the Cushite the following order. Take three men with you from here and pull the prophet Jeremiah out of the well before he dies. The word of the Lord. Breath of 
of dawn make you to shine like the sun and hold you in the palm of his hand. You, you who dwell in the shelter of the Lord, who abide in his shadow for life, say to the Lord, my refuge, my rock in whom I trust, and he will raise you up on eagles' wings. There you on the breath of dawn, make you to shine like the sun, and hold you in the palm of his hand. You need not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrows that fly by day. Though thousands fall about you, near you they shall not come. And he will raise you up on eagles' wings. There you on the breath of dawn make you to shine like the sun and hold you in the palm of his hand. A reading from the letter of the Hebrews. With so many witnesses in a great cloud on every side of us, we too then should throw off everything that hinders us, especially the sin that clings so easily, and keep running steadily in the race we have started. Let us not lose sight of Jesus, who leads us in our faith and brings it to perfection. For the sake of joy, which was still in the future, he endured the cross, disregarding the shamefulness of it, and from now on has taken his place at the right of God's throne. Think of the way he stood such opposition from sinners, and then you will not give up for want of courage. In the fight against sin, you have not yet had to keep fighting to the point of death. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, I have come to bring fire to the earth and how I wish it were blazing already. There is a baptism I must still receive and how great is my distress till it is over. Do you suppose that I am here to bring peace on earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. For from now on, a household of five will be divided 
three against two and two against three. The father divided against the son, son against father, mother against daughter, daughter against mother, mother-in-law against daughter-in-law, daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. The Gospel of the Lord. Once again, I bid you all welcome. I welcome Father Paul Crosby, who parish priest supreme, to be with us today, and Father Jerry Nealon, who has come from Dalvin Park to celebrate the Mass. You welcome, uh, particularly Father Jerry, to the Church of your patron, Colin Barnes. Uh, to the daughter-in-laws of Maureen, uh, Noel and Sean didn't pick the readings for today, just in case you're a little perturbed by them. They're the readings set by the church for this particular Sunday. And, um, but I leave you all to settle it among yourselves. Frank, Michael, Brendan, Sean, Noel, Martin, Dermot, David, Porrick, Niall, Loman, and Roland. You have our prayers and our sympathy in this fifth year, of, if you like, of the passing of your parents, your dad, nearly five years ago in December, and your mum this last week. We journey with you in pain, we journey with you, more importantly, in prayer. Prayer that will speedily bring your mum and your dad to be reunited with those who have gone before her, her own siblings, and indeed two of her grandsons. Those readings, I won't put a tooth in it this morning, friends, are challenging. The bottom line of the reading is that in a world that's, if you like, gone off kilter, in a world that very often has gone wrong, anyone who comes to us speaking God's truth is going to be opposed. That's the bottom line of those readings today. And in ministry as a priest, we see it very often. People very often, nowadays in particular, Jeremiah was preaching to religious people, our secularized world are even more opposed very often to the message of religion. As a priest, we often get letters uh, decrying something we've said from the altar. A friend of mine said recently upon the reception of an, of an anonymous letter, does that upset you? And I said it does to some degree, but in other ways I kind of see it as a feather in my cap. I kind of take pride in it. How come? I said, well, it means I must be preaching something right. I'm unsettling people. Because that's what the scriptures are meant to do. We see the prophet Jeremiah there being thrown into a pit because of his preaching. What did he do wrong? Well, to understand that first reading, just remember that the Babylonians had invaded Israel. And the Israelites were not too impressed. They were unhappy, in fact. And they were fighting back. And Jeremiah, one of the great major prophets of the Old Testament, came along and he said, God wants you to surrender to the Babylonians. They were incited. No way. This man is not speaking the way we want to speak. It was a bit like them taking to social media. They decided that they were going to cancel him. They went to the king and that's what happened. They lowered him into a pit where he sunk into the mud. And then Jesus comes along and he says, I have come to bring fire to the earth. And it's not the cosy fire we might lift light on a winter night, no. That warms us, that we're happy to have. This fire that Jesus is talking about is a consuming fire. We've seen in the news these last couple of weeks the fires that are devastating different parts of Europe and America because of the heat. That's the fire Jesus was talking about. What does he want to consume? What does he want to divide? What does he want to conquer? Sin. Division, hatred, discord. When I was in the, the Boy Scouts years ago, we used to hike in Wicklow, and we'd hike in Hoth. And very often, uh, the men on the hills there, they'd set the fires on the heather. And they'd burn them. They were controlled. And we would trample those headers underfoot, and the smell, the blackness would be on our boots and in our noses for the day. But then after that, You'd see the springtime would come, new growth. You see, very often, fire destroys in order to make room for new growth. And that's what Jesus was talking about in the Gospel this morning. He wants to extinguish, if you like, through fire, all of those elements that are not of God within us, in order to make way for the Kingdom of God. 
your mum, your dad, they cooperated in God's plan for life. Twelve boys. I was in the house yesterday for a cup of tea, and uh, there was a little eight-year-old girl there, and she said to me, Twelve boys? Well, they're not killings, she said. I've only got one sister and I want to throttle her. She didn't use that word, but that's what she meant. And I'm sure as you look back on your childhood, lads, that your mum and dad did a tremendous job in cooperating with God's plan to build up the kingdom. In giving to you the great gift of life, the gift of baptism, new life in the church, the good example of hard work. Many stories being told the last few days here are of your dad going around on his bike. Thank God there's not too many of the events he's going around on bikes anymore. Going around in all parts of South County Mead, working hard to put bread and butter on the table. I was often a recipient of some of that brown bread and a cup of tea out there in Lion's End in the last eight years. Maureen was formidable in many ways. If you like, a toughness with a, of an exterior, but a gentleness interior. In the last few years, small in stature, but magnificent in personality. She always had a word to say, a comment to make. She took no prisoners, but that comes from having 12 lads in the house, let me tell you. In the 1950s, it was not too easy running a house with two rooms, no running water, but it must have been fun. She took up golf after Ronan was born. Somebody said to me last night on the way out, that was because she knew it was time to get out of the house of 12 boys. And boy, was she good at it. And many of her golfing buddies outside today, and that beautiful uh, honour they have given her, leading her into the church, will regale many stories of how she had great friends, but had the ability to make great enemies too, when with double her age, she had half your handicap. And she'd often leave you sitting in the 19th with a puss in your face as she went home smiling, if you like, with a bit of silver. There are so many stories told here around the library, too, of Maureen's fun and frivolity with so many people. I remember one day myself going over to Nicky Newman there. And Maureen had, as I said to her, Maureen, that car is not parked, it's abandoned. <laughs> one wheel on the path and three wheels on the road. And she just said back to me, well, nobody can park like I can. <laughs> on another occasion, following in Father Oliver's footsteps, I was trying to get people to park out the back in the big car park that we have out there. It's bigger than the car park in Trim. People in the library enough to park at the front and on the road. And Maureen said to me, not that long ago, you want us to park out the back, she says, like Father Oliver did. I'm not able to walk. I'm an old woman. I'm 92. Something like that. And I said, Maureen, are you telling me this having just got off a flight from Dubai where you were playing golf? And with that development of a smile, she just walked into the church. <laughs> she knew how to handle men, and handled them very well. As I say, with her 12 sons, with her 38, 36 surviving grandchildren, and 29 great-grandchildren, one on the way, I'm told. She loved them. One day, Marinette came into the house, it was near the first Friday, and uh, with baby Hannah. And the rest of us adults, parish priests included, might as well have faded into the background because she doted not only on her grandchildren, but her great-grandchildren. Finally, with all of this frivolity, I want to be serious for a moment and talk about Maureen's love for God. It was my privilege to minister to her over the last eight years, and indeed to your dad, Michael, to bring them Holy Communion and afford them the richness of the sacraments, to seal them and to give them God's love. And out there I saw not only the care that, and the love of God, but then uh, Angie and Marilyn also would be off in that house. And they'd be sent out to the kitchen to make the tea for the priest, you know. Where Maureen and I would pray, she would receive Holy Communion with great devotion, and then she'd hand me an offering for the parish. The most generous woman in spirit and in pocket. She was delighted that we were doing up the church here in Beliver 
and she wanted to make her small contribution to that too. It's with these memories, friends, and our own stories that we will share over the next few days that we commend Maureen's gentle and loving soul to Almighty God. We pray also for those who've gone before her. Remember Michael, Rosie, Sheila, Marcella, Keen and David in our Mass today. And we pray as you take Maureen from the church after this Mass to bring her to Trim. To quote John Quinn, Good night, Belida. I sleep in Trim. May you rest in peace. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial of the Father. Through him all things are made, for us men and for our salvation is now from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate in the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and the seat of the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess in baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I invite Maureen, Emma, Ashling, Ellen, Laura, Michael, June, and Porek to come forward and lead us in our prayers of the faith. We pray for Nana, who had a long life, who loved and cherished all her family, that she may now rest in eternal peace, reunited with Randad. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all the deceased members of the Byrne and Dempsey families, especially those who recently departed and those who left us too early, including Keen, David and Tricia. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious hear us. We pray for all those who cared for Nana over the past five years, especially her little angel, Angie, who was by her side always, caring for her diligently, ably assisted by Marilyn and Tatiana. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for Dr. Kina Lewis, her predecessor, Dr. Bill Mac McNamara, and all their staff in Longwood Health Centre, the public health nurses in Enfield, the medical staff in Mullingar. Their care and attention meant that Nanny could stay in her beloved Lion's Den up to June this year. May God reward all these caring, kind people for their kindness and support. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Gwian Mudzer, son of Ferner, Fad, Oxen Doctor, Forest of Wolf, Park House, Kogoka. We say, Aspada, Jack of the Nanny, a cook and fern, Ola Kern, on the Shiok on the Gwian Mudzer, Breakers, O Creed, Low, as an Ard, Oxen Kern, a Hospin, Chi, the Nanny. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for Michael and Linda going. Gone, who kept a watchful eye on Nana for us and was always available in emergency. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those that man and has left behind. Herself and dad were with us for such a long time. We pray for the strength and courage to cope with the heavy loss we all feel and to honour both of them every day in how we live our lives. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For a moment in our hearts, let's pray for our own particular intentions. Lord, hear us. We pray for the happy repose of soul also of Eileen Murray. And remember the family of baby Dennis McClare. 
Lord, hear us. We make these prayers that we have spoken aloud, the ones that we all hold silently in our hearts, through Christ our Lord. Please be seated now while Angie and Marlon bring up our gifts of bread and wine. Friends, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
in a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection, ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into heaven. Only say the word in my soul. living bread that has come down from heaven, says the Lord. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. For those of you who wish to receive Holy Communion outside the church, Holy Communion will be brought out. For those of you in the church, uh, I'll ask Father Paul to go to the back and uh, we will stand up here then on either side. If you like, just fill the sides up. Please just be patient and allow time for the Lord to settle with you and to listen to the music in this most sacred moment in our Mass.
lost a mother with a heart of gold. How much we miss her can never be told. She shared our troubles and helped us along. Yet we follow in our footsteps, we will never go wrong. We miss you from the fireside chair, your loving smile and your gentle hair. Your vacant place no one can fill. We miss you, Mother, and all this will. You were a mother very rare, content in her home, and all of us there, except, of course, when there was a game of golf. <laughs> On earth she toiled, in heaven she rests. God bless you, Mother, you were one of the best. Each time we look at your picture, you seem to smile and say, don't be sad, but courage take and love each other for your own sake. Let us stand and pray. Made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conform to his image on earth, we may merit also to be co-heirs of his in heaven, he who lives and reigns forever and ever. Just an announcement for the regular parishioners. Tomorrow is the Feast of the Assumption, a holy day, and there will be Mass in the morning at 10 a.m. in Kildalki, and here tomorrow evening in Beliver at 7 p.m. So I might take the liberty on behalf of, we, we, we're not boys, but on behalf of the boys, on behalf of the Dempsey family, thank you all for your huge presence here, both inside and outside the church. It's a testimony to, not only to them, but to the love they have and you have for their mother and indeed their father, as they say a fond farewell. Um, on behalf of Father Paul, Father Jerry and I, thank you all for your participation in the liturgy and for all who uh, enhanced it so very beautifully. It's a fine tribute morning, this morning, this afternoon. To her sister Kitty, um, we'll explain to her later on, she reminded me before the Mass actually, that when I was in her house some years ago, she was trying to explain to me that she's a bit deaf, and I said to her, have you got a fiver? She said no. <laughs> it's only, we'll talk to Kitty again later on, so, um, the only sibling left, and she'll be a hundred this year, so uh, God speak. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. My dear brothers and sisters, before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister Maureen. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ which conquers all things, destroys even death itself.
our response. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to her aid. Hasten to meet her, angels of the Lord.
Her sister Maureen has gone to a rest in the peace of Christ. May the Lord now welcome her to the table of God's children in heaven. With faith and hope in eternal life, let us assist Maureen with our prayers. Let us pray also for ourselves. May we who mourn be reunited one day with our sister. Together may we meet Christ Jesus when he is our life appears in glory. We read in sacred scripture, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, says the Lord, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Lord Jesus Christ, by your own three days in the tomb, you hallow the graves of all who believe in you, and so made the grave a sign of hope that promises resurrection, even as it claims our mortal bodies. Grant that our sister Maureen may sleep here in peace, until you awaken her to glory, for you are the resurrection and the life. Then she will see you face to face, and in your light will see light, and know the splendor of God, for you live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. Because God has chosen to call our sister Maureen from this life to himself, we commit her body to the earth, for we are dust, and unto dust we shall return. But the Lord Jesus Christ will change our mortal bodies to be like his in glory, for he has risen the firstborn from the dead. So let us commend our sister Maureen to the Lord, that the Lord may embrace her in peace and raise up her body on the last day. For our sister Maureen, let us pray to our Lord Jesus Christ, who said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me shall live even in death and whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Lord, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for mourning and dry the tears of those who weep. We pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. We pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You raise the dead to life. Give to our sister Maureen eternal life. We pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. Maureen was nourished with your body and blood. Grant her a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. We pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. Comfort us in our sorrow at the death of Maureen. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. We pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. With longing for the coming of God's kingdom, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Almighty God, through the death of your Son on the cross, you destroyed our death. Through his rest in the tomb, you hallow the graves of all who believe in you. And through his rising again, you restore us to eternal life. God of the living and the dead, accept our prayers we offer on behalf of your servant Maureen and for all who have died in Christ and are buried with him in the hope of rising again. Since they were true to your name on earth, let them praise you forever in the joy of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. We offer together the first decade of the glorious mysteries, the resurrection, for the repose of Maureen's soul, we unite our prayers with those of our Blessed Mother as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrowful. You are attentive to the prayers of the humble. Hear your people who cry out to you in their need, and strengthen their hope in your lasting goodness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto Maureen, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. May she rest in peace. Amen. May Maureen's soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. May the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now I invite Sean to share a reflection. Thank you, Father. Um, I'm not a great fan of graveside eulogies, but agreed to do this here to save the parish priest of Beliver and some of his curates from getting the belt of a crozier. I'm getting far too old for that now. Everybody here has their own memories of Mam, and these are just a few of my reflections, which are by no means exhaustive. We've been so lucky to have such a tower of strength as Mam with us for so long, and the few words said here will in no way do justice to the woman she was, and the mother that we will always remember. Indeed, the last few days we have heard many stories of Mam's sharp wit, her kindness, her love of family, her enjoyment of travel and her love of sport. Many tributes have been paid to her by her friends, neighbours and family, and they paint a picture of a warm, loving woman, a loving wife, a dedicated mother, a much admired mother-in-law, an affectionate grandmother and great-grandmother and a loyal friend. Mam, the baker, is leaving us now to be reunited with Dad, the breadwinner. As I contemplated the inevitability of this day over the past few months, the words baker and breadwinner kept coming into my mind. Mam was a provider. She was the queen of brown bread making. Her brown bread never made it to the local agricultural shows or to glossy magazines. They were consumed almost immediately, even up to very recent times. And when she couldn't make them herself in the last year, she passed the skill on of brown bread making to her carer Angie, who was with us today. Dad was the breadwinner. They were together for over 70 years, during which time they needed together a legacy and an example of what commitment to family means. Together they foraged for all the ingredients which produce that legacy and which inspire us all in our own lives. We will dearly miss Dad, we dearly miss Dad and now miss Mam so much. Now we have only the radar they gave us to navigate our way through life and continue their legacy. In a way, Mam's commitment to brown bread making sums up her life. She was committed to family from the earliest arrival, Frank, to the last one, Ronan. The words icon, legacy, superwoman recur in the many tributes we've received uh, from Mam since she passed on Thursday. She would have been very chuffed and would probably agree quietly with all of those descriptions. She was all of those, but first and foremost, she was a mother, a grandmother and a great grandmother who cherished her family she also loved her daughters-in-law who were her companions through life, the daughters she never had, 
and who provided a huge support for all of us in her care in over recent years. She was proud of our achievements but never allowed us to get too far ahead of ourselves. She could be critical of us, give out to us an odd time and point out our weaknesses, but dare anybody else do so. Mam always had a welcome for visitors at Lion's Den. Nobody left without a cup of tea and a slice of brown bread. Back when the travellers frequented the byroads of Ireland and moved from place to place, they often camped near homes where they knew they would receive a welcome. Our house was one of those homes, and every year a traveller family would camp nearby for a few days, always sure of a welcome from Mam and a cup of tea and some substance. Mam developed great, a great uh, many interests as we grew up. Among these were GAA games, golf and more recently bowls. At football and hurling matches she often focused not on the game but on the referee. She always saw the injustice of the free against, against her boys team. In fact, she often acted as referee and could be clearly heard by all on and off the pitch. In later years she used her refereeing talents to shout at the referee from the sitting room armchair as she watched games on television. Golf became Mam's first love in later life and she built up a huge circle of friends, particularly in her home club, County Meath Golf Club. Their friendship, love and respect were such a joy to her and the club's marks of respect today and over the past few days are greatly appreciated. Mam loved to travel and if there was golf to be played when abroad, that was a bonus. She played golf in places like Australia, Dubai, America and all over Europe. She travelled to China in her late 70s and one of her much younger travel companions who was supposed to be taking care of Mam told us yesterday that Mam would insist on one for the road. Mam ended up bringing her home and putting her to bed. She loved to represent her golf club and served as president with distinction. She boasted of having a few hole in ones and I recollect at least one of these was achieved in Turkey. She was a great fan of the Oireachtas golf outings at home and abroad before they became known as Golfgate and she could mix it with the best. Many of her golfing friends regaled us with stories of her experiences with Mam when, she played, when they played golf. One person told us yesterday Mam taught her how to play golf fast. <laughs> During Covid, which Mam battled and beat twice, she watched Sky Sports daily and was never short of a comment on the golfer's putting skills or the lack of them. We could all depend on Mam for advice as long as we were prepared to hear it straight from the hip. As often as not, the response would be, what do you want to be doing that for? Or, aren't you grand the way you are? And if you were thinking of buying a new car, she might say, isn't the old one good enough? Of course, she loved to hear about our successes, but would often use the phrase, sure, aren't you as well off without it? And don't be killing yourself, when ventures were less successful. In the early days, Mam cycled everywhere. I have vivid memories of her leaving the house on her bicycle, her skirt flapping all over the place, a scarf around her neck, and a sweet afton cigarette protruding from her lips. Manny would not know that Mam smoked 60 sweet afton non-tipped cigarettes a day until she was 50 years old. On the cigarette package was the poem by Scottish poet Robert Burns, which read, Flow gently, sweet afton, among thy green braes. Flow gently, I'll sing you a song in thy praise. My Mary asleep by the murmuring stream, flow gently, sweet Afton, disturb not her dream. Of course, Mam and her many avid smoker friends were totally unaware of the poetic significance that surrounded every puff of smoke that soared in triumph into the atmosphere or the toxic tar that invaded her unsuspecting lungs and lingered there. We marvelled how, while making the daily batch of brown bread, she could knead the dough between her hands, scatter flour on the table to ease the process and simultaneously roll a sweet afton from one side of her mouth to the other. All this as the ash perilously hung from its tip. Instinctively, she managed to balance the dying ember until she got to the Rayburn, where she parted with the ash. Mam learned to drive as soon as we got our first car. She got her own car in the 70s. That gave her great independence. However, she was very unlucky with the cars. Apparently, they all had bad clutches. <laughs> Mam was more a clutch person than a brake person when it came to stopping the car. Her last car has had at least three clutches replaced. No amount of argument could convince Mam that she should take her foot off the clutch once she changed gears. And stories are legendary of the high revs from the Renault Clio as Mammy exited the golf club car park, usually very late on a Thursday night, with, a little, with little fear of a flashing blue light or the dreaded words, will you blow into this, madam? <laughs> she never got round to fitting the boy racer mufflers, but in reality, she didn't really need them. 
Both mum and dad lived through the world through World War II before marrying and starting a family in the late forties. Just like their parents before, they insulated us from the extremes of what they had experienced and no doubt sought to ensure a better future for the next generation. In the 50s, there, were no, there was a great equilibrium of frugality. In the 50s, Irish society was homogenous. We were all poor, but we didn't know it. Everybody was black, everything was black or white. Photographs from those days were all in black and white. There was no need for colour because there was no colour. We were part of a community with little variation in beliefs, economics, circumstances, religion, language, assets or colour. There was very little diversity except perhaps, perhaps for the tinkers, now called travellers. We considered them just poorer versions of ourselves. Together, the baker and the breadwinner devoted their lives to the family and we were, lucky, we were the lucky ones to have such devoted parents. Mam never left the cooker or the sink or the washboard when we were growing up and Dad foraged and diversified to make ends meet as the family grew. Originally we had no running water, no one outside toilet and two bedrooms. As the family expanded together, Mam and Dad found the resources to feed and clothe us and add to the accommodation at Lion's Den. Mam was resourceful and big into recycling. Once the cloth four stone bag of flowers were empty, the flour was used to bake the brown bread and the bags were washed and doubled up as nappies. Old tea chests were used as cots. We kept a pig and a turkey and were self-sufficient for fuel, potatoes and vegetables for much of the year. Mam taught us all the skills of cooking, ironing and cleaning, all of which we, we practice daily, particularly Dermot, Michael and Martin. <laughs> Mam kept active all her life. The hard grind of the early days at Lion's Den, the cycling to the shop or to kitties or to trim kept her fit. In later life, her golf and bowls kept her active. The last few years were very difficult for Mam as her mobility lessened and it was difficult for her and indeed for us to watch, especially in the last few months. As I watched her in, the rec in recent weeks, I wrote these words. She sits staring vacantly, her worn hands clasped, no longer able to knead the dough. 97 years of memories locked in, some emerged from long ago, words painfully formed as she tries to piece together a sentence. Fixations followed by moments of clarity kindle hope of her return home. Mother's hands, worn and weary, four scores and more of toil and moil, cooking and cleaning, kneading and nursing, mending and washing. Her fingers adorned with diamonds, emerald and gold, memories of life, love and adventure, her grip still strong, holding on to ours, as she did to the Callaway driver on the tea boxes far and wide. Her grip on life slipping away, those kind hands, though worn and weak, hold on to dear life. Her eyes flicker feebly, desperate to discern a familiar face. A reassuring voice, her lips murmur unintelligibly, her grip on hand and life less strong now. Sleep returns, a welcome release from the unknown, the cacophony of sounds. Her tired eyes flicker feebly. Are you OK, ma'am? Grand, comes the feeble reply. Gentle breathing, weaker each day. We all knew it was time to let her go, to be with Dad. Ma'am was, was christened Mary, and I think it's fitting that we say for one last time, Flow gently, sweet Afton, among thy green braes. Flow gently, I sing thee a song of thy praise. My Mary asleep in thy murmuring stream. Flow gently, sweet Afton, Afton, disturb not her dreams. Sweet dreams, ma'am, in the arms of the angels. You are some woman, a great mother and an amazing friend. Cormac is going to say goodbye now to his granny with a, a song requested by a lot of people. Mama said there'll be days like this. It's not always raining the days like this When there's no one complaining but the days like this and all the parts of the puzzle start to look like they fit. My mama told me there'd be days like this. When you 
don't need an answer if it is like this. When you don't need a chance, if it is like this. When you don't get betrayed by that old Judas kiss. When mama told me if it is like this. When everyone is up front, then they're not playing tricks. We don't have no freeloaders out to get their kicks. When it's nobody's business, the way that you want to live. Mama told me to be days like this. Mama told me to be days like this. We don't need an answer to be days like this. We don't need a chance, sir. Days like this, when other parts of the puzzle start to look like they fit. Mama told me days like this. Na 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 na. Well, my mama told me days like this. Oh, my mama told me there'd be days like this. Oh, my mama told me there'd be days like this. All right, who's next? We'd like to see most of you back at the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> Which hotel? Which hotel there? Knightsbrook. 